Hi, I'm Jacqueline Peng and you're watching the HTV Evening Highlights. Weak CPO prices dealt a blow to Syme Darby's second quarter earnings. The company, which is the world's largest palm oil planter by acreage, says net profits slumped by almost 40%. Syme Darby's net profit for the quarter ended December 2015 fell to 273 million ringgit. Revenue rose 10% to just under 12 billion ringgit. For the cumulative six months, net profit dropped 39% to 602 million ringgit. Bottom line was up just 5% to 22 billion ringgit. Despite the drop in earnings, Syme Darby is proposing a dividend of 6 cents a share for the quarter. Going forward, things are going to get tougher. Saim Darby is already expecting its performance for FY16 to be lower compared with FY15. At the close, its shares were down 4% at 7 ringgit 64 cent for a market cap of 48.8 billion ringgit. Telecom Malaysia's latest quarterly net profit is also down, primarily due to the consolidation of Packet One's operational losses. The telco's top line is down by about 12%, while revenue was flat. Telecom's net profit for the three months to December 2015 fell to 192 million ringgit. Revenue inch up 0.9% as income from data and voice-related services declined. It declared a second interim dividend of 12.1 cent a share. For the full year, net profit fell some 16% to 700 million ringgit. That's mostly because of Forex losses from borrowings. Revenue rose a marginal 4% to 11.7 billion ringgit. Moving forward, Telecom is expecting 2016 to be a stable year for the company. For its next fiscal year, it's allocating about 25 to 30 percent of its revenue for CAPEX. In terms of CAPEX, we'll continue the uh, programs and projects that we already have, uh, mainly the HSBB2 and SUBB, that's one. And of course, uh, you know, heavier investment in the uh, P1 rollout as well. Uh, this is an invest in investment year for us, 2016. So we'll see a little bit higher capex this year compared to last year. Telecom's shares ended the day down 0.6% at 6 ringgit 62 cent for a market cap of 25 billion ringgit. Can the government sue the Wall Street Journal for its report on the 1MDB scandal? The answer, according to a special officer from the PM's office, is it's difficult due to the US Speech Act which gives protection against foreign libel judgment. Special Officer at the Prime Minister's Office, Yuktas Vijay says it will be difficult for Dato Sri Najib Raza to sue the Wall Street Journal for defamation. On his Facebook, Vijay explains that the US Speech Act gives immunity to those who create defamatory statements blocking any libel judgment outside of its borders. So Najib will have a hard time pursuing the matter to the next level. As opposed to how late Singapore PM Lee Kuan Yew's successful suit against the Daily, Vijay says that's because the law was only enacted in 2010. Aside from that, Vijay pointed out that the burden of proof in American laws falls upon the plaintiff. Meaning Najib will have to prove how he was defamed. However, Vijay thinks that Najib is unlikely to file a suit to avoid involving those who funded his election campaign as witness in court, more so when the potential witness is a Saudi royalty. Last year, the Wall Street Journal published an expose claiming that 2.6 billion ringgit was channeled from 1MDB into Najib's personal bank accounts. While the Attorney General cleared Najib and former 1MDB subsidiary SRC International of any graft charges, Communication and Multimedia Minister Dato Sri Saleh Said Karwa also waded into the fray. He accused the American Daily of pursuing an agenda to run down Malaysia and its democratically elected government. And that wraps up the evening highlights. I'm Jacqueline Peng. Thank you for watching.